And seventh, the restoration. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 21. When you look at John chapter 21, and you come to John chapter 20, it looks like the book ended at the end of John chapter 20. Let me read the last two verses of John chapter 20. Verse 30 and 31, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And that seems to be a good conclusion to the book. And yet there is chapter 21. Why is there chapter 21? Why is there an epilogue to the gospel that John wrote? Some things seem to have been left unfinished, including the role of Peter. The issue of denying becomes an issue during persecution, right? If there's no persecution, if nobody's questioning your faith, denying is not an issue. When John wrote his book, it was between 80 and 90 AD. That was about 50 years after the events. A lot happened in those 50 years. In AD 70, Jerusalem was destroyed by General Titus. In the late 60s, Nero burned Christians at the stake. Peter was crucified. Paul was killed, there was widespread persecution going on, and there was a debate of what to do for those people that denied Jesus during the persecution. There were two options, there were two schools of thought at that time. Should we restore them, or should we not restore them? And so John adds this epilogue to show that Jesus actually had option three. And so we've, we've read the story before um, on, on the Sea of Galilee, which by the way is the only account of the Sea of Galilee after the resurrection. Jesus is at the Sea of Galilee, the disciples, the seven disciples are on the boat, they cannot catch any fish. Jesus uh, tells them to catch some fish, they bring the fish, by the time Jesus has got some fish, he's made a fire, he's made breakfast for them, they have breakfast, and then sitting opposite Peter, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me more than these? Peter had a very high opinion about himself. If you asked him this question a few days before, he said what he said. He said, I will never, I will never deny you. I will never run away. And so Jesus is confronting Peter's high opinion about himself and his commitment to Jesus. But Jesus did not go easy with a superficial answer. But what is it that brought, that brought Peter grief? Jesus asked the first time, he said, sure, I love you. He asked the second time, do you love me more than these? He said, sure, I love you. Then he asked Peter a third time, do you love me more than these? And the Bible says Peter was grieved. Why was Peter grieved? Let's read the verse, John chapter 21, verse 17. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Why was Peter hurt? Because it was the third time. It was erroneously thought that it was because of different use of Greek words for love that Peter was grieved. That's not the case. John uses words randomly without, um, without a care for whether it's agape or phileo. In fact, from 400 BC onwards, the word agape was used for love in standard Greek. John uses phileo or agape whenever he wants, without any, any meaning behind it. But that's not even the thing. Jesus spoke to him in Aramaic. 
It wasn't even Greek. Peter was grieved because Jesus asked the third time. Why was he grieved? Because the third time as Jesus is asking Peter, he's sitting opposite the charcoal fire that he made with a light flickering on his face. And when Jesus asked him the third time, he is reminded of a few days before when he sat behind the charcoal fire and the eyes of Jesus pierced through his heart as he denied Jesus a third time. Jesus brought him back to where he sinned. And so he was graved. There were two options for those who denied. Do we restore them? Do we not restore them? Jesus gave the third option. What is the third option? We will restore them, but first they need to confront their own sin and their own weakness and admit their impossibility of living by themselves. And then we will restore them. Jesus goes beyond forgiveness and says, I have forgiven you. What are you going to do because of it? And so he asked him to take care of his church. Not only does Jesus forgive him, but gives him the privilege to partner with him in his global task. There's something else that happened before this encounter. Before this encounter on the beach, there was something else that happened. In Mark chapter 16, and we will end with this. In Mark chapter 16, verses 5 to 7. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Do not be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. There are four accounts of the gospel. Luke got his information from various sources, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Matthew and John had direct eyewitness accounts. They were one of the, they were one of 12 apostles. Where did Mark get his information from? Mark got his information from Peter. And Mark wrote his gospel in the 50s, about 20 years after the events happened. It was the earliest gospel. Only Mark writes this, where they say, tell the disciples and Peter. A lot has happened since the denial, right? Jesus was taken, there was another trial to ratify the first trial, and then he was led to Pilate's house, Pilate's palace, he was taken to Herod's palace, he was brought back to Pilate's palace, he was flogged within an inch of his life. Then he carried his cross all the way across through the city to Golgotha, where he was crucified and had the seven sayings. He died, he was buried, and now it is Resurrection Sunday. Peter missed all of this. And yet, the angel of the Lord says this to the women, tell his disciples and Peter. There is no other gospel that writes this. Even 20 years later, Peter was so distraught during that time, and Jesus knew that he was distraught. So even though Jesus was carrying the sin of the world on Resurrection Sunday, what was Jesus thinking about to Comfort Peter. Go tell his disciples and Peter. He has a special care for his hurting disciple. That is the grace and the care of God for those of us who are broken.